So you want to learn how to create this crazy explosion with all of the effects in the foreground and in the background? Well then you've clicked on just the right video because in this tutorial I'll be breaking down everything that you see on the screen step by step and I won't be gatekeeping anything inside of this tutorial. But first off since I'm giving out so much styles for free I just gotta let you guys know that I run the Stay Creative store linked in the description. You can find my personal presets and assets that I've been using for the past four years to edit music videos. And also anyone who buys any of my preset packs will be getting invited to my exclusive discord where I'll be leaving this project file linked. But let's get right into it. So I'm in After Effects and this is the clip that I got from this also camel music video it's a clean clip and there's a lot of things i can do to spice this up so the first thing that i'll be doing is just simply Control d duplicate it and let's name the top one foreground and name the bottom one background i never name my layers but we'll be working with a lot of layers in this one so that's why i named them and let's mask out our subject using the rotor brush tool so we can separate him from the background and start putting on effects so i'll just go around my subject rotoscoping him out and i won't go through this too much in depth because we have a lot of things to go through in this tutorial and i don't want to drag it out so i'll just skip to the part when i'm done with this so now that i messed out my subject i'll be leaving it right there i won't be adding any effects on for now so we can actually just hide the rotoscope layer and let's go to the background layer and i'll open up the tracker tab right here and if you can't find your tracker tab just head to window and then scroll down to tracker and select it of course and then head to track camera press that one and scroll down to advanced and select detail analysis so now that my camera is tracked you can see that i got all of these points on my screen and you can see all of these points stay in place they're pretty clean because i'm working with a static shot which means that the camera isn't moving but if your camera is moving you want to pick one of these points that doesn't move throughout the scene or doesn't like disappear throughout your scene but since i'm working with the static shot i can go with basically any of these points i don't want my explosion over here so i'll pick this point and I'll create a solid and a camera and now you can tell i got this really really small solid over there so if i size it up and then play the scene you can see it's like stuck right there but the problem is that it's really small so what i'll do is right click and pre-compose it and then press leave all attributes blah 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 and then we can open up this and if we go to our project settings and check right here you can see that it's 20 pixels by 20 pixels which is really small so let's turn this up to a 1920 times 1080 like this and then we can actually remove the solid and let's add in an explosion so i got three explosions and i'll pick between these three I'll leave all three in the description for you guys to use. Um, I don't know where I got them from to be honest, but there are also like explosions available on YouTube. But I'll leave all of these three linked to the description in a Google Drive or something so you can download them. So now if I go out of this pre-comp, you can see we got this explosion in our scene and I'll just put it under our subject and we can unhide it. So now we got our explosion in here. So if I play through right now, it doesn't look good at all. Like just looks like i slapped it onto the screen so to make this better i'll open up the pre-comp and let's turn up the speed of this explosion first off let's turn it up to like 50 because it was pretty slow so now it looks a little bit better if i hide our subject you can see that we got this shadow from the explosion kind of want the shadow to hit right here because the light is coming from that side either way you can see we got a shadow right here so that will look good so let's turn up the size of this and let's move it so we can keep the shadow like over there with the car mm, like this and then we can unhide our subject it doesn't look too realistic right now but we will be working on that mm, something like this should do i guess this will work because we'll add some effects on later which will kind of disguise it and make it look a little bit better but first off i'll add a gaussian blur onto this or a camera lens blur it doesn't really matter so i'll go with the camera lens blur and let's keep it at like 3.5 so this is without the camera lens blur and with it so it just looks a little bit more realistic because the car is also really blurry so let's actually turn it up and try to match the blurriness with the car we can also add a little bit of a camera lens blur to our subject but i just want it like really subtle so i'll turn it down to 1.5 and let's add in a curve on our explosion so we can make it look a little bit better and make it match the scene so let's do a little s curve like this and let's bring up the greens a little bit as well as the red like this we can get like that orange kind of tint on our explosion yeah i think that looks good so this is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now 
just one of those tiny details that you don't pay too much attention to but it's there if you want to be like really a perfectionist we can duplicate this and let's mask out this part right here with the shadow we can add a gaussian blur onto that and we can turn it up so the shadow matches the shadow over there so just blur it out like that and let's copy this mask onto the other explosion layer and let's press M on our keyboard and invert this mask that way we only got one of these shadows and we can also turn down the opacity a little bit like this yeah I think that looks better so let's actually name this like explosion shadow and I'll copy explosion and paste it onto this one so we've got explosion and explosion shadow background and subject if I play through right now it should look pretty decent and it does look good I'm really happy with it but you can see like for the first couple of frames right here the explosion doesn't come in like half a second in and this clip is already pretty short so I'll open this up and drag the explosion a little bit back so it can come in a little bit earlier like right there when the clip starts we'll have the explosion so now if I play it through it looks like this and I'll actually change the resolution to full so we can see it in full quality this will probably burn my PC up but we'll see what it looks like and it actually looks crazy I'm really happy with it so now I'll spice everything up add some shakes add some extra stuff to our subject just to make it look a lot better so first off I'll add in some dust and I got this dust overlay straight off of YouTube I'll be completely honest with you guys I'll probably also leave it in the description with the explosions so feel free to go and grab that I'll actually also make it 3D and put it in between our subject and the explosions and let's add on a deep glow to this so we can have a, a tiny glow and I don't want it to be white because that's a little bit too boring a little bit too plain so let's add on a fill effect and let's change it to the same color of the explosion I'll have it a little bit darker actually so I'll change it to this kind of orange and then make it like this color and that's good but it's really subtle so I'll actually duplicate it and put it over our subject and size it up that way we'll have like two different layers and this one will feel like it's closer to the camera just add a little bit more detail and I'm pretty happy with what we got with the explosion so I'll try to spice it up in my own way so what I'll do is go to animation presets and under user presets I got this ultimate VFX kit I got this halftone cartoon effect so I'll just so I'll just drag it onto my subject like this you can see straight away I got this halftone effect but I won't gatekeep it so I'll go through it with you guys but if you want some crazy presets I got this ultimate VFX kit with over 55 assets linked in the description you can go and check it out if you'd like to but I got this Gaussian blur and then this halftone effect and I changed my dots to white and dots frequency to 189 dots angle to minus 30 basically mess with the effects and you'll get something cool either way I changed the color to the same color of the scene so it can kind of match in some way you can see that I got this cartoon effect number two and to add this on I'll basically just duplicate my layer and remove all of the effects except for the roto brush and then I'll just drag on this effect and now you can see that we got this outline and it's pretty simple it's obviously the mask and then a gaussian blur then a simple shulker to add this kind of outline and then a fill effect to get this white color and then a refined soft matte to make the edges a little bit smoother you can, but once again you can mess with all of the effects mess with the color if you like like a red or something just make it your own style you don't have to copy what i do but now after spicing that up i'll play through and show you guys what i got and i'm pretty happy with it but it's still a little bit too subtle especially in the background so to spice this up i'll also add a curve to the background and I'll just make a simple S curve so I'll turn down the darkness and bring up the brightness as well as a sapphire vignette and you don't need to use the sapphire one you can use like the built-in vignette and it doesn't really matter but I'll change the color to this orange to kind of match the scene and then I'll turn up the radius like this so it's just around the corners right there but it really changes the mood and we can actually keyframe this so it will come in at the end but yeah I'll keyframe it 1.16 then around the middle I'll turn it up so it's not too visible like that and then 
as well as a sapphire hotspot to the background but i'll keep this one really subtle because it doesn't really match the vibe but i still want to spice up the background a little bit so this is when you keep it like at a high number so let's put it under the vignette actually and turn it down so we can also keep from this like halfway through our clip and then towards the end we can turn it up a little bit like this it's just a subtle detail nothing too visible so now that i've done all of this i'll actually i'll actually pre-compose everything just to add like some zoom some shakes and maybe some sound effects also so let's pre-compose everything and now we got our pre-comp right here and the first thing that i'll be doing is adding on one of my subtle shakes from my ultimate shake pack can basically add on any shake it's just a basic shake with a zoom and it looks like this right now but i don't really like the zoom that's built in with the shake i don't think that it fits my clip so what i'll do is actually remove that one and i'll create my and i'll create a new one so keyframe the scale drag it all the way to the end and let's zoom all the way into like 220 percent turn on motion blur and i'll ease my keyframes and create a graph that looks something like this just so it goes fast in the beginning and then slows down yeah like that i'm pretty happy with that and then i'll create a new adjustment layer with some extra effects like a lens blur you can use a camera lens blur but i really like this bcc lens blur so i'll drag it onto my adjustment layer turn it down to zero and let's keyframe it from zero and then like over here when he looks to the side i think i'll add on like some kind of glow over here so it looks like he's looking at it and turn up the lens blur to like 15 and then go just a few frames in turn it back to zero so it looks like the camera is like struggling to focus because of the explosions and everything and i'll create a graph that looks something like this or actually something like that yeah i'm pretty happy with this so i'll play through and show you guys what it looks like and then i'll also add in a zoom when the camera lens blur comes in right here and i can also turn up the scale to like 200 for both the x and the y so it looks a little bit more blurry so i'll add on a transform which will be like one of the last effects and drag it onto the adjustment layer and let's keep from the scale all the way to here so you can zoom in to like 140 like this or like 130 should do it and then i'll create a keyframe so that the zoom in hits when the camera lens blur hits like right here Get, just to make it a little bit more realistic because if you know anything about cameras they struggle to focus when you zoom in and i'll actually turn it down to like 10 because it's a little bit too much Or actually like 7 because this is also a little bit too much. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Now I'll just create a final adjustment layer. And add on a pose rise time. And change the frame rate to 12. You don't have to do this but I kind of like this style and I've always wanted to try it out. So And like I said, I'll add in a, some extra sauce. Like some light coming from here. And I'll have to gatekeep that. So if you want the full project file with that. You can go and copy any of my packs. And you'll be a part of the exclusive discord. Where I'll drop the project file. And I'll have so much sauce in there. So think about it. Check the link in the description. All of my presets are in there. But I hope you're not pissed because of the gatekeeping. But thank you so much for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribing. Because it helps me out as a creator. And helps me create more videos like this one. So it will mean a lot to me. But thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.